Hey guys, uh, I'm going to be reviewing what I went over this week, so I'm going to set a five minute timer starting now. Alright, so we are going over the differences between HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So, here's a grid I set up. Um, I have a slideshow version of this in Canvas, uh, but basically starting with the left we've got HTML and I have these different categories. So first of all, it's just what is it? And then the purpose. So what does HTML do? It's structure, it's basically structure, objects, things. CSS is the looks and the style. JavaScript is things like actions, pop-ups, animations, and all that. I have examples of the syntax, and I compare these to different parts of grammar. So if we were thinking of this in terms of like a language, um, just like English and Spanish have different grammars, um, we know that nouns refer to things and objects, people, places. So that's how you can kind of think of HTML. Uh, if you think of CSS in terms of adjectives, adjectives describe things. So is it tall, short? What's the color? Um, like how wide is it? Uh, is it transparent? Those types of things. So when you're describing it. And then JavaScript is like verbs. So JavaScript is all the actions like open, close, switch slides, cause pop-up, um, submit, those sorts of things. And if you refer to it, if you think about it in terms of a building, uh, HTML is kind of like the walls and the structure, CSS is like the paint and the curtains, and JavaScript is like the plumbing, electricity, AC and all that stuff. I'll go in all that more in depth. So starting with HTML, again, the purpose is it's the structure, it's the objects, it's the things. So like I said before, if you think about it in terms of a building, it's like the drywall, it's like the bricks, it's like the steel, the concrete, all the stuff that makes up the basic structure of the building. It's not much to look at. And the syntax of HTML, is written like this. So as you've seen already, uh, we it's made up of tags, which is basically you have the name of the tag, and in this case, P is for paragraph. It's between two angled brackets. And then within the opening tag, you have attributes. So in this case, if we set a class, it's gonna be called nice. We'll get a little more into that later. And then you have your closing tag. So basically the closing tag is identical to the opening tag, only it has a slash in it, and it's not gonna have these attributes. And attributes are all optional as well. You don't need to have attributes. And then all the contents of the paragraph are between the opening and the closing tag. So think of them like, book, like a book cover and the back of the book, and these are like the pages. So you can't have a book without like a back cover or a front cover it'll just be a bunch of papers. So just think of it that way. All right, CSS. So this is an example of how YouTube or an older version of YouTube looks with CSS and without CSS. So as you can see, it's pretty hideous without any styling. It's all just kind of looks like Craigslist. There's not any formatting to it. So CSS handles all that. You can also see they set the color the fonts, this underline, all that sorts of stuff. And then CSS, it's like the painting. So if you look at the wallpaper, the carpet, the paint, like that is what CSS is like. You're not adding any structure, you're just styling it. And this is the syntax for CSS. So the selector is basically the name of the tag or the class or the ID that you're selecting. So in the earlier example, we had the P for the p tag for a paragraph. So in this case, if we have this CSS, anytime we see a paragraph tag in our HTML, it's going to be colored red. And so you can also think, think of this like a uh, character creator in like me or the Sims. So your, like basically the hair would be the selector. So we wanna select hair, or even like up here, you'd say hairstyle, that would be the selector. And then hair color, that would be similar to the property. So hair color, and then brown would be the property value or just the value. 
So this is how you can kind of think of CSS. So the hair is already there. We're just changing its appearance. And another uh, property value could be like um, kind of like one of these. So I guess you could say hair would be like the tag and then hairstyle could be like a property. So like short, spiky, combed, that sort of thing. All right, JavaScript, like I said, it's the, the inner workings of the web page. So it's like the plumbing or the gas or the electricity. Uh, whenever you search something in Google and it auto-completes, that is a function of JavaScript along with a bunch of other stuff, but you couldn't really do that with HTML and CSS. Um, I, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking maybe at all, or just you, you couldn't do it very easily. And if you have a pop-up, you would do that with JavaScript. And that's it. So I went a little over, but that's essentially what we're covering this week. And all the assignments are in Canvas.